Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t-shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go. Report number 40935 Class Alpha Submitted by witness on Saturday, April 20th, 2013. Friends almost strike a tall, man-like animal as it crosses the road outside Chiefland. Year 2013. Season, Spring. Month, April. Date, 13th. State, Florida. County, Levi County. Location details. It happened in between Chiefland and Otter Creek. I would say about four to five miles north of Otter Creek or Highway 24 and Chiefland. Nearest town between Chiefland, Florida and Otter Creek in Levi County. Nearest road, Highway 19. <coughs> Observed. On Saturday, April 13th at 1.30 a.m., a friend and I were driving south on Highway 19 in Levi County, Florida. We saw something at the woods line which almost instantly was in the road by center lane. I thought we were going to hit it. It appeared to be brown, about 8 or 9 feet tall, and no face. Its arms appeared to, re to be reached out as if to hit the car. In shock as to what we had just seen, my friend hit the brakes. I then told him to keep going as I did not want to turn back, not knowing what had just happened. It could bring harm to, to us or worse. We were about four to five miles north of Otter Creek, in between Chiefland and Otter Creek. This figure or creature appeared to be human-shaped. I've always been a skeptic of Bigfoot, but now I'm definitely a believer. I know what I saw, and so did my friend. There is no houses or street lights or driveways for miles in this area, so I don't think this was a prank. Also, it was incredible how fast this creature was able to get from woods line to center of the road. It had to be at least 30 yards. I will never forget what we experienced that morning. Other witnesses, just me and a friend, were in the car, which we both witnessed the same thing. Time and conditions, we had the high beams on, and it was a clear night. Environment, all we could see was woods on both sides of the road. In the daylight, it looked woodsy and swampy. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator David Bacara. I spoke with the witness by phone, and he seemed quite sincere and forthright. He and his friend were driving south on Highway 19 to check on some property. It was a two-lane road with a 20 to 30 foot shoulder and lined with forest on both sides. It was quite dark and they noticed many deer standing alongside the road as they left the lights of Chiefland. They had slowed to just under the speed limit of 55 to watch for deer in the road. They had their high beams on. The driver was the first to notice a large animal just outside the tree line on his left. The next thing he remembered, it was in the middle of the road and they were bearing down on it fast. The animal was tall enough that the lights only illuminated the lower portion. So the head wasn't visible. Within seconds, the car was upon it and they both thought they were about to collide with it. The witness said the closest they were to it was about an inch. They both thought the passenger side mirror would clip it. It was described as unnaturally fast, huge, about eight to nine feet tall, covered in dark brown hair. It appeared to have extended its arms to brace for impact. The arms were described as long and the build was tall and slender. The driver hit the brakes to turn around and check on the animal, but the passenger asked him to keep driving and wasn't comfortable going back. 
Neither witnesses ever gave the existence of Bigfoot a serious thought until this moment. Report number 55574, Class Alpha. Submitted by witness on Sunday, September 11, 2016. Daytime road crossing seen by twin sisters near Cedar Key. Year 2016. Season, Fall. Month, September. Date, 11th. The state, Florida. County, Levi County. Location details, Two Lane Country Road. Nearest town, the nearest town was Cedar Key. The nearest road, CR 347, north of Southwest 61st. Observed, September 11, 2016 at approximately 11.20 a.m. <clears throat> My sister and I were traveling on CR 347 north of Cedar Key, a little north of Southwest 61st Street. We were coming out of a curve when we both saw something in the road ahead. It was a large creature, approximately seven and a half to eight feet tall, covered with grayish black hair, walking across the highway. It turned to look at us, then quickly disappeared into the woods. There were no other cars around or houses nearby, and the area was very woody and swampy. If this was a hoax, it was a great one. We called and made a report with Levi County Sheriff as soon as we got self-service. Other witnesses? Yes, two witnesses driving. Time and conditions? 11.20 a.m. Environment? Sunny day near wildlife refuge swamp and wooded. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Sibelia Irwin. I spoke with both witnesses via a conference call. I find both women to be very credible. Details that can be added. The sisters were driving through the area one week after Hurricane Herman. Flooding and standing water were observed. They were traveling at approximately 50 miles an hour when the passenger saw the creature on the right side of the two-lane road. Distance away from the subject was approximately 50 yards. The passenger had the best view of the subject, including its face, as it turned to look at them. The driver witnessed the back side of the subject as it slipped into the woods. It took two steps to cross the road and it was gone. They turned around and filmed the woods where the creature had disappeared, thinking it might return. They were both in shock for hours. Estimated weight of the subject is between 550 and 700 pounds. Witnesses stated the subject had bowling ball sized shoulders, meaning they were literally as large and thick as a bowling ball. They both expressed that the arms were longer than the subject in the Patterson footage of 1967, but stated that the hair looked very much the same. The shoulders were approximately four feet in width and that the subject was very muscular and thick. It did appear to have a slight waist. The subject appeared to be aging or mature. Its hair was black with gray on the end. The hair was two to two and a half inches. Parts of its gray hair were matted and sticking out. They stated that the head seemed small compared to the rest of its body, and the shape of the head was odd. No neck or ears were observed. They called to report their sighting to the Levi County Sheriff. The person they talked to did not sound surprised about the sighting. They were asked if they lived in the area, and when they responded that they did not, they were told that someone would be sent to the area to investigate. The Lower Suwannee National Wildlife Refuge, LSNWR, is part of the United States National Wildlife Refuge System. The 53,000 acre, <coughs> 210 kilometers, kilom Meters Wildlife Refuge was established in 1979 to protect one of the largest undeveloped river delta systems in the United States. 
The Suwannee River and nearby bottomland hardwood swamps, pine forest and cypress domes, tidal creeks, and vast salt marshes provide habitat for thousands of creatures every year. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t-shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go. Report number 56061, Class Alpha. Submitted by witness on Saturday, December 3rd, 2016. Nighttime sighting by a husband and wife driving near Rock Mart. Year 2016. Season winter. Month December. Date third. State Georgia. County Harrelson County. Location details one and a half mile up Vincent Mountain Road after turning off Highway 120. Left side of road across from a church. Nearest Road, Highway 120, and Vincent Mountain Road. Observed. On our way home to Rock Mart, Georgia, from Birmingham, Alabama, we were following the directions the GPS gave for the distance. This brought us to Highway 120 and Vincent Mountain Road. We had just made that turn and gone a mile and a half when my husband and myself saw a large figure standing in the tree line. There was illumination coming from the right side of the road from an additional light source other than our car headlights. This enabled us to clearly see this figure that was on the left side of the road with one arm straight down and the other arm slightly moving. I believe that arm movement is what caught our attention, making us both look to our left clearly, allowing us both to view this creature. It was covered in reddish-brown fur from head to toe with a face I can only describe as ape-like. It appeared to be over seven feet tall. He, she seemed to be getting ready to cross the road. After about 15 seconds passed, he and I both screamed out, Did you just see what I saw? I have never been a big believer in the legend of Bigfoot, but I know what I saw tonight, and I am floored. I have never written to any site such as this about anything in my life and I certainly didn't think I would start at 56 years old. Thank you for your time. Also noticed, nothing else I can think of. Other witnesses, two, myself and my husband. Time and conditions, 10.30 approximately, and it was drizzling after we have been without significant rainfall in over 30 days. We are in extreme drought environment forest there was a small store right at the intersection and the, sh the short way down to where we saw this creature is also a church I think the floodlight from the church was where the backup backlight came allowing us to see the creature follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator David Bacara I spoke with both witnesses and they both seemed level-headed and still excited about what they had seen that night. It was approximately 10.30 p.m. when both witnesses and their 20-year-old daughter, sleeping in the back seat, were headed home to Rock Mart, Georgia from Birmingham, Alabama on the night of December 3, 2016. It was raining a light drizzle, which was a welcome change as Georgia is in the midst of a statewide drought. It was the first sign of any precipitation in two months. After turning onto Vincent Mountain Road and traveling approximately one and a half miles, 
the wife noticed a slight movement on the left side of the road. It was approximately 50 feet ahead, and the car was traveling at 45 miles per hour. It was slightly illuminated from the parking lot's lights from a church directly across the street. The witnesses stated if it wasn't for the slight movement it made, they may not have seen it. It was described as standing between two trees, approximately 15 feet from the car, 7 to 8 feet tall, covered in red, orangish brown hair, with a face of a mix between a man and a gorilla. The witnesses stated they believed the movement that drew their attention was that of its left arm. They watched it for a total of about six seconds. The wife stated it acted like it was about to step out and cross the road. The creature watched the couple go by as they observed it. As they passed it, the wife was able to look back through the rear glass as it was still in the church lights. It wasn't until they had drove down the road about another mile that the husband asked if she had seen anything back there. They both agreed immediately they had just seen a Bigfoot. These witnesses stated that they can't imagine it was anything else as it was too tall to be a person in costume. Report number 57884, Class Alpha, submitted by witness on Saturday, July 15, 2017. Nighttime road crossing outside Parish. Year 2017. Season, Summer. Month, July. T date, 10th. State, Florida. County, Manatee County. Location details. Wooded to the right side of the road where it exited the highway. Nearest town, Parish. Nearest road, Highway 62. Observed. Monday, July 10th, 2017. 5.15 a.m. while driving home from an all-night fishing trip at Tampa Bay. We were about two miles outside of Parrish, Florida. There was a car ahead of us, and we were about ten car lengths behind. This creature waited for the car ahead of us to pass and ran across between our two cars. It was running upright on two legs. It was huge and fast. It didn't have the shoulder motion that a human has when they run Manatee Sheriff contacted. Also noticed, the shoulders didn't swing or move when it ran very short or no neck, only seen the feet hit twice and it was in the grass and gone. Other witnesses, two saw it, three smelled it, but four in our vehicle. Granddaughter was asleep. Other stories talked to the Manatee Sheriff, and they said there are reports from time to time. <clears throat> we live in a neighboring county. We are not familiar with that area. Time and conditions, 515 a.m. Environment, Woods. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator R. Monteith. On the early morning of July 10th, before sunrise, the family mom, dad, adult son, and granddaughter were driving eastbound on Highway 62 after a night of fishing on Tampa Bay. They were outside Parish when a large bipedal figure crossed the road about 10 car lengths ahead of them, left to right. They were able to see the figure in the taillights of the car in front of them and their own headlights. The car immediately was filled with a horrible smell. The mom and dad in the front seat saw the figure. The passengers in the back did not, however, they did smell the odor. The car was traveling at about 70 miles per hour, and both witnesses claim it showed intelligence as it waited for the first car to pass and quickly crossed the road in two big steps. There were no street lights. The Bigfoot was dark in color, running stiffly without any arm 
swing in the car's high beam lights. The dad said it had been had very long legs. Both witnesses spoke over each other, describing odor as a strange mix of polecat, musky, swamp water, and sulfur. On the morning of the crossing, the mom called the Manatee County Sheriff's Office to report it and spoke to a deputy who admitted they have calls like this from time to time in that area. BFRO investigator, investigator David Bacara and myself, as well as other Florida investigators, have spoken to the couple about this incident. The mom and dad are both still very disturbed and overwhelmed about what they saw and are still trying to come to terms with the event almost a year later. The area is remote with ranches and farms spread far apart, just north of Mayaka River State Park. BFRO David Bacara assisted in this investigation.